Hey, it's Mark Ferguson with Investor More, and I'm back with another real estate video. And today I am revisiting one of my big, huge, major goals that got me tons of attention 10 years ago. It's crazy to say that it's been 10 years um, since I did this, but um, time flies when you're having fun. And that goal was to purchase 100 rental properties by January of 2023. And now we're in February a little bit, and it's crazy. It seems like it was such a long time in the future when I made that goal, and it was so far away. And now here we are, and I didn't come close to reaching it. And that's okay. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about that goal, what happened, why I didn't reach it, and then also I'm gonna go over my goals for 2022 and 2023. I always have goals that I set. And I thought this would be the perfect video to go over those real quick as well for those of you who are really interested in them. All right, now this is on my site, investormore.com. If you want to check that out, it's an article that I originally wrote in May of 2013 and have updated over the years. And my goal articles are also on investormore.com if you want to see that. I just published it that goes over my goals in detail and has some fun videos as well. Okay, love the likes, love the comments, love the shares, and love seeing new subscribers as well. And let's talk about this plan to purchase 100 properties that I created almost 10 years ago. Um, so I bought my very first rental property in 2010. I bought one in 2010, one in 2011. I bought a couple in 2012. And then I think I bought three in 2013. And I was always into setting big goals. I also started my blog in 2013, investormore.com. Um, I bought out my dad in 2013. I bought his business and um, so he could retire. And then um, one of my really good friends, Justin, actually joined my office in 2013 as well. So that was quite the year. A lot of crazy stuff happened in 2013. And I also made this goal that year. And the idea was, you know, I've been buying a couple properties every year. And I wrote out a goal um, of how many properties I could buy in 10 years. And when I wrote out my realistic goal, I think I came up with like 30. I thought if I'm going at my same pace and I keep buying, buying properties like I am, I could buy 30 properties in 10 years. And at the time, these are just single family houses around Greeley, Colorado. Um, I was paying a 90 to 120,000 for them. Aren't those the great days of real estate? <laughs> now those same houses are 400,000. But I thought I could keep doing that and buy properties at that pace and get to 30 rentals. But then I thought, okay, that's cool. But I've always been big into setting goals. Um, I shouldn't say always. Around my mid-20s, I really got into self-help and setting goals and, and making myself a better person, not just floating along like I had been before. And so I thought, how do I make this a really big, scary goal? And then that's when I said, okay, Instead of 30, let's make it 100. We're going to figure out how to make myself buy 100 properties over the next 10 years. And things like this seem you know, great on the surface. And it's like, oh, yeah, that'd be cool to buy 100 properties. Pfft, that's crazy. Like, that's never going to happen. So when I do things like this, when I make big goals, you can't just say I'm going to buy 100 rental properties and just cross your fingers and hope that eventually that happens, right? I went through and I wrote this whole article and I have a video I did on this a couple of years ago as well that talked about my plan to buy 100 rentals. And um, I talk about why real estate, if it's possible, all of that. But that's not all I did. What I did is if you come down here and read this, and I'll link to this in the comments or description below, well, I have all kinds of stuff about um, why I think I could do this. I went year by year. I talked about how many rentals I'm going to buy each year, how much cash flow I'm going to have, um, how much I'll be paying off my properties. I was kind of big into thinking I would pay off a bunch of my properties back then. I'm not big into that anymore. Things change. We'll talk about that. And I went into year two, how many properties I would buy then. I said I would buy, what was it, nine in 2014. Um, I thought I would buy 11 the next year. Um, was that 12 the year after that? Another 12, oh, what was that, 13, 13, 13, and I would get there. And so when I broke it down year by year like that, all of a sudden it didn't seem so crazy. Yes, it was still a hard goal. I'd have to be very fortunate and work very hard 
and do a lot of different things to reach that goal. But it was it's much more doable when you break it into years like this and realize, hey, instead of saying 100, it's like, oh, buy 10 properties in one year or eight properties in one year. Yes, that's still a lot. That's still working hard to do that. But it's much more manageable when you think of it that way. And that's kind of how I've tried to set goals and do things for most of my life is set big goals, aggressive goals, and then break them down on how you'll actually do them. You can't just say, I'm going to make a million dollars without a plan or any idea what you're doing. You've got to say, hey, I'm going to make a million dollars. Here's how I'm going to do it. Here are the steps I'm going to take, and here's what's going to get me there. And that's what's really helped me become successful and do different things. So even though I didn't accomplish this goal, I still learned a lot from this goal. It pushed me a lot, and I accomplished a lot in that time. Now, um, one of the reasons, I have a few reasons why I didn't accomplish this, and I talk about potential roadblocks right here. So I want to read what my potential roadblocks were. Um, new ways to find properties. So I said I was going to buy, use direct marketing, which I have done, but I knew I had to find better ways to find properties because buying most of my stuff off the MLS back then. Um, private money. I used a little bit of private money back then, but not very much, and I actually found lots of different ways of finding private money, so that's something I did. New income sources. This is a quote from me. I have no idea what the future holds as far as opportunities and money. I may find a gold mine that will allow me to buy properties for cash and not have to worry about financing at all. Sometimes I'm a little bit sarcastic, sorry. But I knew I had to find new ways to make more money. I was doing okay back then. I was still selling foreclosures, um, working in the real estate office, but um, I knew I had to make a lot more to buy this many properties because I was planning to put 20% down on most of these properties. And then um, I also said I was going to try and pay off a lot of them off free and clear, um, which would also take a lot of money and cash, but I didn't end up doing that either. And then oh, I haven't even read all this, artic this article for a while. What will I do in 2023 if I reach my goal? This is kind of cool. I have many things I would love to do if I did not have to work. Here's a list of the few things I would love to do with $1 million a year coming in and no job. So I figured out that if I accomplished all this and had my 100 properties and a lot of them paid off, I'd be making a million dollars a year from cash flow. So that was kind of the goal. So I haven't definitely not there yet. Um, still could do that. But here's some of the things I talked about. Start a pizza restaurant, start a car dealership, travel the world with my family, donate time and money to those less fortunate, play in the World Series of Poker, attend a Super Bowl, play golf all over the world, buy a Lamborghini Diablo. This is before I had my Diablo, so I did actually do that. Buy a beach house, that'd be cool. Help teach others about real estate. I've done a lot of that. So after being in, in businesses and a few things, I don't know if I want to start a restaurant. Those seem like an incredible amount of work and very finicky as far as making money. So I don't know, maybe. Car dealership, kind of the same thing. I've kind of gotten my kicks from just buying cars without having to do a dealership. Um, but the whole reason I wanted to start a car dealership was because I could experience and have lots and lots of cool cars and be able to afford them. And I thought I would do that by buying and selling them. I've been fortunate enough to be able to just buy and keep a lot of those. Travel the world. We do travel a lot. Donate time and money to those less fortunate. I definitely do my fair share of that, but could definitely do a lot more. Playing the World Series of Poker. I used to be a big poker player. I haven't played for a long time, so not sure if that's still there. Attend the Super Bowl. Maybe that's become kind of a circus, but still kind of cool to see these. And so I updated this over the years as well and talked about how my plans changed. And um, that was kind of cool to see as well. So I want to read 2016 because that's when my real estate strategies really changed. I want to see what this says. The market has gotten even crazy in Colorado. Houses I was buying for $100,000 are now at least 160000 or more. I thought that was crazy. <laughs> the rents have not increased nearly as much as house values have increased. It is very hard to find rentals, and I have stopped buying them in Colorado. I have started to look at other states, including Florida, for a new market. I also stopped paying off my mortgages early. I decided my money was better used to buy as many homes as I could. It has paid off buying 16 rentals in the last five years since our market has gone up so much. I have invested about 300000 to buying my houses, and my equity is close to $1.5 million. I have even decided to sell some of my rentals and reinvest that capital into more properties in another market. I wrote, this, I wrote this goal out in 2013 and updated it in 2014, and it is now 2016. I think goals are vitally important to achieving what you want in life. Will I reach this goal? I do not know. If I don't reach it, will I be a failure? No. I'm already way ahead of where I have, would have been had I not done this goal. 
that is the point of goals to motivate yourself farther than you think you can go, not always to complete them. Um, so that was kind of cool. And that is when I did a pivoting point. So I bought 16 single family rentals from 2010 to 2015. Way behind my goal to buy 100, but prices kept going up. I faced some more challenges and um, I wasn't able to buy as many as I thought. That's okay. I still bought a lot, right? My end, what I realistically, realistically thought I could buy was 30 in 10 years. I bought 15 in, um, that was what, three years total. And um, so that was pretty, actually, I bought my first one in 2010. So five years, I guess, six. But anyway, I was farther ahead than I thought I could go. Um, the tricky part was finding rentals that cash flowed. And I was going to buy in Florida. But what I did instead is I started buying commercial properties in Colorado. So I think it's very important when you make goals like this, when you do things like this, it's okay to be flexible. It's okay to change things. It's okay to see what happened, work with it, and do something different. And that's what I do with my goals as well. So I went from wanting to buy 100 rental properties to buying commercial rentals. And I can't, it was really hard to say, oh, I want to just buy 100 commercial properties, commercial rental properties, because where I'm standing, sitting, I'm not standing, sorry, where I'm sitting right now in my office is part of a 68,000 square foot commercial building. If I count that as one property, I would be in pretty good shape if I had a hundred of these, but that would be also very tough to do. So I've done a lot, I've accomplished a lot, but things change. And actually when I counted up all the doors I have, if you count doors basically as each unit I have as a rental, um, single family, I have some multi-unit properties now, I have commercial properties like this, which is 68,000 square feet, but has a grocery store, coffee shop, restaurant, dance studio, my office. We have five units here. It's got five doors. I actually had 100 doors, and I counted my flips too because I cheated. So, <laughs> and I had 100 doors, which was close to 100 properties. So I kind of, if I fib a little bit, I come close to achieving this goal. But um, like I said, I don't feel bad since some of my doors have 60,000 square feet like the grocery store over there. So it, goals change, they move, but they still are vitally important to help you do more and push you farther than you think you can go without them. And so this plan was really cool. It got a lot of attention when I made it. I used to write for Bigger Pockets when I wrote this goal. I put it on there and got a lot of people to my blog. So it was really cool to do that and see that. And people have still asked me about that years and years and years later. And that's kind of the update on how it is. And I, pub I post this sometimes and people think I accomplished it when I posted, but no, I posted to show you the goal, how it changed, how it was different from what I really wanted. So in the end though, I do have about $22 million in real estate right now. Um, I have 40-ish properties, 40-ish rental properties, I think. Most of those are commercial properties now. I only have a handful of single family rentals because I sold those and 1031 exchanged a lot of them to get into commercial properties. So I did find new ways to buy more properties, to buy more expensive properties. I found more private money. I refinanced a bunch of properties. And even though I didn't reach this goal, honestly, I came, you know, the result was similar to what I wanted. Maybe not quite all the way there. And that's okay too, because if you reach your goals really easily, then you might be cutting yourself short from doing as much as you think you can. So honestly, I'm okay making goals that I don't hit, that I don't reach, but are still close enough in sight that they aren't ridiculous. And that's kind of what this goal was, which is pretty cool and pretty cool to see it. So that's the update on this goal. And what about my goals for now? <laughs> All right, if we go to my blog, my latest article, my real estate goals. Cool, Justin makes my pictures. So <laughs> I haven't seen, I don't think I've seen that picture yet. Um, every year for the last eight, nine years now, I've done this and written out my goals and what I want to do and how I did. And you can see a link to all of them here if you want to go through and read those. Many of you think it's probably the boringest thing in the world. Some people might like to see how I do it and what I do. Um, so these were my goals for 2022. Complete 36 rehabs. Usually I have a flip goal where I talk about how many houses I want to flip. And I changed it up because we've been buying a lot of rentals and doing different stuff. And so I want to complete 36 rehabs. We got really close. I think we were around 30. But the problem with this goal was I still need to sell properties. I have a lot of different things going on with remodels, um, refinances, different things, flipping. But if I buy a bunch of flips and don't sell them, that doesn't do very good. So I still have to sell properties to keep cash flow moving, keep that going. So 
While this was an interesting goal, I'm going to change that one this year, and I'll show you how. But I did come close. And there's the complex, which was seven remodels in one, right? We had seven different units there. That was a crazy property, a cool one. My next goal was to add 45000 a month in passive income. I did not do that either. Um, I think I maybe added $15,000. Uh, this is a tricky goal for me too. I hadn't done this before either. And the problem is I did a refinance, which literally helped me create $8,000 a month in cash flow from paying off higher interest debt to um, paying off other, I think I paid off a bunch of my car loans with that the bank wanted me to do. And then I get that. I buy new properties. I add cash flow. But then I buy interesting projects that aren't rented yet, and that reduces my cash flow because I'm paying out taxes and insurance and financing costs. And so it's tricky for me just to add that number unless I just stop buying properties, but I'm not going to do that that are <laughs> need work or need help. So um, I did add more passive income. That might have been a little bit too aggressive of a goal. Who knows? But um, it was still a good goal to push me and to keep me focusing on adding cash flow, not just buy, buying good deals. Refinance $2 million of debt was one of my goals too. I did do that. I had a big refinance with a local bank, um, refinanced I think seven or eight properties and refinanced lots of debt. That was a great deal. I'm actually working on doing another one similar to that now and kind of take the private money, refinance into long-term bank money. Yes, interest rates are higher, but you still have a huge advantage of um, refinancing money into long-term money. And commercial um, rates aren't even that much higher than residential now. It's kind of weird. It's really the higher rates have hurt the American people, regular people, much more than investors. And I wish they would go down because of that. But anyway, that's another tangent. Uh, make $500,000 in revenue from Invest for More. I also did not come close to this one, but I like making big goals, like I said. And this comes from a number of sources. Um, I have coaching on Invest for More. I do coaching calls. I have some guys like the Complete Blueprint on my books. I've got 10 books I sell on Amazon, which make money. Um, I've got affiliates who I refer people to. I don't have a lot of them. I always make sure I trust them and I know who they are. But I send people out to those where I make money on. I always disclose that too when it's an affiliate like you're supposed to do. Not everybody does that. Um, and then I also actually get paid by social media. Like not a lot of people know that. Facebook pays me money to post on Facebook. And it depends on how well my posts do and my reels do. The same with Instagram, the same with TikTok. So I get paid to do that. And all the people who are arguing with me, and sometimes we get landlord haters and different people on there, all they're doing is making me money by engaging and commenting, and it's kind of crazy. So that's a weird one, and it's actually a pretty significant amount of money. It went up a lot this year, so that's kind of crazy. But again, nowhere close to that, but I, I, if I make big goals like that, sometimes it makes me think, um, think of different ways to do things to help people. I hired a company to help me last year that I thought would do really big things. They made a whole lot of promises and really fizzled out to do nothing. So that happens too because you do lose money um, trying to go after big things like this as well. But again, um, I have some ideas and different things I want to try this year to get close to there again. Add 200,000 social media followers. I did come really close to that. I don't know if I quite got it. YouTube did much better. Facebook did really good. Instagram did horrible. <laughs> it's been, I have 185,000 followers on Instagram. I've had that for like two years. I don't know if Instagram just hates me or doesn't like me um, or if the platform is just down. But yeah, I've not been adding followers at all. And a lot of other real estate people I know in there haven't really been adding followers too. So maybe it's just an Instagram thing, but it used to be so much more fun when you gain followers, see people, do different things. But um, you really want to focus on what's doing well. And honestly, that's been Facebook for me lately with my group. We've gone from 60,000 followers to 125,000 followers in the last year alone. All right. Um, add 3 million worth of debt. Yes, it's a weird goal. I know. But I do like debt. De debt makes me money. Debt allows me to buy properties that make money. allows me to get good deals. And I came really close to this. I think I actually probably passed it up when you count the flips and the rental properties I bought. I bought the mini mart, the liquor store, bought the industrial complex, bought a couple of other rentals, bought the bar. And so I was at, able to add more debt. And then, like I said, the refinance goal and this kind of work together, usually buy new properties with private money, then convert it to longer term money with banks. And that works out okay. And here was a crazy one that I've had a number of years, buy a Lamborghini Countach. And 
I make this goal most years and don't think, I don't say I don't think it's going to happen, but I know it might be a long shot. Things have to work out perfectly. Well, they worked out perfectly, and I did get that car this year. A dream of mine, and um, could not believe it. Uh, love the car. A lot of people talk bad about these cars. Once you figure them out and drive them and you own one, it is you realize how amazing they are. And this is by far my favorite car I own now. Um, is it the fastest? No. Is it the most comfortable? No. But once you learn how to sit in it, once you learn how to drive it, once you learn what went into it and what it is, it is absolutely amazing and better than I ever hoped it would be. So it's, that's been pretty cool. All right, my goals for 2023. So here are the new ones that I made for this next year. Um, sell 20 properties. This is one I have not done before either. And this is kind of where I, I said I want to do 36 rehabs before. But selling properties is important to my business to keep cash and money moving. And this might be some rental properties, some flips, because there are some rentals I've had for a long time that I probably should sell and are just sitting there. Um, that will bar... That one's actually under contract to sell. I had someone approach me who wanted to buy it, and some other ones have been sitting for a long time, like the old restaurant. We're trying to fix that up. I'll probably sell that. It's not good. Like Those don't help my cash flow when I just have property sitting there vacant, not doing anything. Uh, buy 12 flips. I didn't buy I only bought six flips last year, which was crazy. That's the least amount of flips I've bought in like 10 years, maybe longer. And so I definitely want to buy more flips, although some of those flips were multi-unit properties. And I still love flipping. I like doing that. I know a lot of you like those videos, so... Still want to buy more flips and then um, rehab those, of course. Buy $2 million worth of rental properties. I think that's a good number. I had a goal to buy a certain square footage amount of rental properties, which was really cool. But then I kind of bought a bunch of really weird stuff that was really gigantic and huge that made me no money and <laughs> sat there vacant. And I've sold some of those, but I realized, hey, I need to be more specific with these goals, not just buy big stuff, but buy, you know, at least have some cash flow, some money, and, and not just buy giant vacant ones. That's kind of one of my goals. It's not written in a goal Nikki's in favor of too, is not buy giant, big, vacant properties. Refinance $2 million of debt, again. Um, again, make 500000 revenue from Invest for More. Again, add 250,000 social media followers this year. We talked about that already. And then here are some fun new ones I made too. So I bought the liquor store, Mini Mart, and um, we've had revenues. I've kept track of sales. We've really I think the store is real solid right now, but it can do way better. We've kind of like got a baseline. Everything's pretty smooth. Now it's time to really improve things. And so one of my goals is to raise revenue from 65000 a month to 95000 a month. That's a big jump, but I think we can do that. I actually um, got my food safety license. So I had to take a class, pass a test, um, because either the manager or the owner of the store has to have that to up our food license. I managed to do that. I managed to pass my test. We got a mop sink put in. We now upped our food license at the store so we can offer more food options. We're working on that right now. I think that will be a big thing and we'll see what else we can do with this store too. So that will be a cool goal to watch. All these others will be too. And it's also important not just to make goals and forget about them, but to keep track of them all year long. And that's one reason why I post these and do videos and talk about goals a lot. Not just for you, but it helps me too. It helps me become accountable and, and realize Hey, I need to you know think about these again and, and, and keep on track and, and stay focused. Otherwise, it's real easy to wander off and do different things and look for shiny objects and not do what really is important to be doing. So there you go. There are my goals for next year, my goals for last year, and my 100 property goal. We'll see how this year goes. So far, it's not quite as crazy as last year. <laughs> we'll see how the real estate market goes. We'll see how interest rates go. All that great stuff. All right. Love the comments. Love the shares. Love the likes. Keep those coming. And um, love to hear what you think of these videos. And we'll have more videos, don't worry, coming up of our actual properties and flips and rentals and commercial properties and businesses and all of that great stuff as well. All right. Take care.